Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're located. We would like to thank you for joining today's Crosslink webinar regarding your tax office as an essential business and how to market this to your clients. My name is John Amaya. I am the Vice President of Marketing and Public Relations here at Crosslink Professional Tax Solutions. And I am joined today by Steve Kratsky. He is our Director of Learning here at Crosslink. Together, we're going to take you through today's presentation and hopefully share some information with you that does one of two things. Either we are going to confirm some of the information that you're already aware of. Many of you are already implementing some of these steps, and this will act as a confirmation of what you are doing. For others, this might be some new information or something you've thought about but haven't implemented yet, and we hope we can help to guide you in a direction that can help you to make a stronger impact on your community through the current environment and in doing so allow you to help grow your business not just this tax season but heading into future tax seasons so with that we're going to go ahead and get started today and let you know we're open for business everyone here is open for business and that is why we're on today's call so with that before we go too deep into this we all recognize the current environment we're in and that we need to be thanking those around us, whether it be from the frontline medical workers to the individuals at the grocery or retail stores we're going to, or for many of us that have started utilizing home delivery, maybe more than we ever have in the past for our UPS drivers, mail carriers, uh, the Amazon deliveries, and even our groceries being delivered. To our door. These are all essential items and essential businesses that are keeping us going. So if you know anybody in these or you have a second job in one of these uh, areas, we'd like to thank you. We would also like to carry this forth to you, the tax preparer, and thank you for being out there for your community. It is extremely important as we move forward, and we're going to be talking about this today, that we recognize the value that you, the professional tax preparer, brings to your local community. So with that, I would like to turn this over to Steve Kratsky, and he is going to take us through the agenda. Thank you, John. And uh, again, welcome everyone. We know how trying these times are right now, and we appreciate you taking a few minutes with us just to make sure, again, if it's confirmation or if it's new information in either case, we appreciate you being here, and we hope that you take this information back to your offices. What we're going to cover is, first of all, an understanding, and John touched on it, but we really want to make sure that you really grasp the idea that you're an essential business, and in fact, a very important business, especially as people are trying to get stimulus checks out to their uh, – people are trying to receive stimulus checks from the government. So you are an essential business, and then how you can grow your client base out of this. That's one of the things that uh, we want to make sure that we, we cover with you. Your communication strategy. This is an absolutely huge piece to the whole thing. People are communicating differently today and people are receiving communications differently today. And we want to make sure we touch on these things so that you're, you're not misstepping in any way and inadvertently doing that type of thing. You want to make sure people know that you're open, even if it's remote. We also want to talk just for a couple minutes about social distancing and tax preparation and some of the things that you can do. And we'll finish up with business continuity planning. So that's all we're going to cover. I don't believe this is going to take more than a half an hour, but we hope that there's something that you take out of this, even if it's simply a confirmation of the things that you're already doing. So as we go forward, let's go ahead and we're going to start with you are being you are an essential service. If you notice right here, essential critical infrastructure workers is is actually uh, laid out by the government itself. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security has identified financial sector as an essential and provided this guidance for state, local, and tribal territorial officials. If you'll notice, right smack dab in the middle of this chart right here, you'll see financial services. So one of the things that's a misnomer by, and some people don't understand is, is that this, because of the work that you do with your customers, you're considered to be essential and can be open for business. There isn't any kind of issue with regard to that. You can always take a look at your local regulations as well. But knowing that, we, we need to understand that this is very important and your folks are counting on you. Your customers are counting on you being available, especially if they have not done any kind of uh, tax, uh, haven't done their taxes for this particular year. In fact, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security defines financial services as follows. And you can read this at your leisure, but you'll notice public accounting is very much part of this. 
So one of the things we actually make sure that everyone knows is that where other folks are expected to be closed, you can be open for business and you want to make sure that your clients and then better yet, the entire community that you serve is aware of that. Okay. Next, with regard to that, while the U.S. Department of Homeland Security issued this guidance, it's also very important to check with your regional and state governments for local guidance. Again, you will be considered an essential service, but you also see that in California or in Florida, and these are just two simple examples, some of the things that they'll say. And so sometimes they'll point you back to the federal regulations, sometimes they'll have their own for their state, but I can assure you that as of right now, all of the folks that are doing tax preparation are considered essential services by both the state as well as the, the federal government. Okay. Next up, with regard to that type of thing, your community needs you. In fact, they need you more than ever. One of the things that's very interesting, the taxpayers need right now, they need their refunds as soon as possible. Obviously, they're in a dire situation in some instances. The economic impact payments, they need those as soon as possible. And to complete the 2018 and 29 tax returns in order to be eligible for any kind of stimuli. So any kind of stimulus payments that are available out there, it is absolutely tied to tax returns. So many taxpayers have yet to file for 2019. In fact, the federal statistics are out and they definitely say that we are down this year. And I speak of we as an entire industry. And so when I talk about the industry itself and I say, hey, we are behind where we have been in years past, it's because people haven't filed yet. And yet, here's the, here's the interesting piece. They need to file to be eligible for many of the things that, that the government is offering them. So many taxpayers, even though they haven't filed yet, Congress is looking for additional taxpayer stimulus programs. So it's not even this first go around. There could be additional ones on top of that. So you actually present the solutions for your customers uh, for both current as well as other folks as well, as, and even bringing in new clients. So please understand right away that your community needs you, and if anyone that you have within your book of business has not filed for this year, that is something that they really need to be able to do in order to get the stimulus checks that are available to them. Okay? So really, literally, now more than ever, individuals in your community need guidance during this unprecedented time. This has never happened before. At least it's been since, what, the 1920s or something to that effect? Well, guess what? Because of that, they need your help with regard to their taxes. They need your help with regard to understanding the stimulus checks. They need to understand or need your help oftentimes with what's next and what's going to be considered the new normal. Being there literally for your folks and your community during these uncertain times may help in the longer term growth of your business. In other words, people will not only count on you now, but this is a way of growing your business as well. Why do I say that? Because people will remember. People that have been helped during this time are going to remember. And so if you folks, uh, if you can help your community, they are going to certainly remember um, that in, in future years. So what we want to do now is go ahead and take a look at what your marketing strategy would be during this unprecedented time. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to John. Steve, thank you. And it is really important that we all understand that we are an essential business. And what we're going to talk about moving forward is with your communications and everything you market to your clients, helping them to helping to remind them that you are in fact open for business. Okay. If we're going to be honest with each uh, with each other on this call, no one truly knows how long we're going to be under the current shelter in place or stay at home, safer at home, uh, whatever your your state or local region is calling it. We don't really know how long this will last and we don't know if we're going to face a situation where they're going to be re-implemented in the future if things flare up so with that in mind we do have to look at both short-term and long-term solutions on our marketing strategy and making sure that we have a plan for both so what we want to do is highlight a couple of things for you and just a level set when we talk about short term what we are talking about is what we can do between now and July 15th. Steve talked a few minutes ago about the fact that a lot of returns haven't been completed, that the industry as a whole on returns, whether it's do-it-yourself returns or professionally prepared returns, are behind. Part of the reason for that is that the deadlines have been extended to July 15th. Now that said is we all understand that we can't go out there and change our marketing strategy we can't go out there and spend a bunch of money when 
money might be tight coming into the business, but there are tools that we have available to us today that we wanna make sure we go ahead and use. And some of these are pretty straightforward, but not everybody's using them and not everybody that is using them is using them correct. So we're gonna talk a little bit about those. First of all, social media is extremely important. A lot of you use this very well. Some of you are a little nervous about using this, but I can tell you, especially in a time like this where you wanna communicate things on a daily or even an hourly basis as things change to your customers in terms of what your hours are or how you can support them, that social media is truly a medium that you can use, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, even things like Instagram as you, or, or, or other, other uh, uh, avenues that are available to you on social media that you can use to communicate to your customers in a, very much a real-time situation. And for those of you that follow Crosslink on our social media channels, you'll see that we've got daily and sometimes multiple times a day that we are providing updates to you. Let's not forget about calling our customers. Uh, it, it, you'll be able to pull as it, whoever your tax provider is, you should have some sort of report available to you, whoever your tax software provider is, that allows you to see who has come in and who hasn't come into your office. Give them a call if it's a customer or a client that you haven't seen this year. You need to make sure that you're reaching out to them. And you can do that obviously via email as well. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about email uh, in the next slide and, and some things for you to consider. Texting is very much a viable option. A lot of tax software solutions have a texting solution available to you, Crosslink does. Uh, and, and the assumption is, is that your tax software provider does as well if you're not a Crosslink customer. So we encourage you to use those tools available to communicate with your customer. And something such as text can be very valuable uh, to your clients today in that they may not be sitting in front of their computer in the office like they do on a normal basis. And their phone is very much the best way to get a hold of them. And then this one is specific. We're not gonna spend too much time being specific to Crosslink customers on today's call. Our, our real goal here is to help all professional tax preparers, not just Crosslink customers. But if you are a Crosslink customer, we do encourage you to use the non-returning clients list as this will allow you to see who hasn't come into your office yet this year and then reach out to them accordingly. All right, so moving forward, longer term, and we actually have a little bit of a debate. We talk about midterm, long term with this. We're gonna, we landed on longer term and what we're really talking about is in the next season. And the reason for that is we don't exactly know what we're looking at in the near, mid or long term future in regards to this current environment. With that, it is very possible that going into next season, it will start very much the same way the season ended. We all hope it doesn't. And if it doesn't, your existing marketing and everything you do today that works for you, that's great. Let's continue to do it. But let's also have a plan in place just in case we end up going into next season in a slightly different environment than what we're traditionally used to. So with that, you need to consider not just behavior changes for yourself and your business, but the behavior changes of your customers. We're gonna to continue to use all the short-term tools that we mentioned on the left side of the screen, but we also need to consider new venues. And what we mean by this is your customers may not be driving by your storefront. They may not be walking by your storefront like they did in the past. So all the great window advertising you've done in the past, does that still apply? And you need to ask yourself, where will the eyeballs be? The eyeballs of your clients, where are they going to be seeing marketing? And there's a long list, and we just provide a couple of examples here of things that you may not have looked at in the past, but you can definitely consider, whether it be your local pharmacies, grocery stores, uh, on the grocery carts, if you're not already doing this, or you weren't aware, is you can definitely go do advertising on those little plastic pieces in the seats for your little kids that flip up. Uh, you can typically do an advertisement there. You can do an advertisement um, on the handles. There's all sorts of opportunities that exist at grocery stores that you can look at. But as can, people's environments change, the places that they will continue to go is where you need to be looking. And then we're gonna talk about communication here in more detail 
but more so than ever, communication is going to be extremely valuable. And as that communication becomes more and more valuable, it's extremely important that you communicate early and you communicate often to your customers. So with that, let's segue into discussing the communications to it. You need to let your customers know that you're open for business. We were talking about this. And if you think about the emotions you get associated with things, really what you need to know is if you're saying you're closed or you're saying you're remote, that has a, a negative connotation with it. As you can almost think of uh, remote or closed as, as bad and open and available as good. And what we mean by that is as you move forward, we would encourage each of you, and you would see when we send our emails out, we get a lot of auto responses back here at Crosslink. And when we do that, we find a lot of people are actually still conducting business. But even though they're conducting business, their auto reply starts out with, we are currently closed, or we are currently remote, and we will get back to you. That immediately puts the tax client back on their heels saying, oh man, they're not available. How do I approach this? Okay, so instead of that, we encourage you to remove any reference to being closed or remote. And anytime you think of using the words closed or remote, instead use the terminology, we are open, we are available to you. There's nothing wrong with stating that due to the current coronavirus, uh, we are uh, um, available to you through non-traditional methods and you can talk whatever that might look like, but you absolutely need to consider how you set those auto responses so that your clients know that you are open for business. This also applies to your web uh, website and social media. If you look at a lot of websites out there today, there will be something like, we are open for business during the COVID-19, contact us here. That doesn't necessarily mean that your storefront's open, it doesn't mean that you have clients coming into your office, in some cases you do, and we'll talk about what that might look like. But in a lot of cases you don't, but you're still open for business. Your business is opening and processing returns and you need to let your customers know that, not just now, but as we go into future tax seasons, if we're experiencing that. You could go to any major tax site you want. We'll even show you the Crosslink site here in a little bit and you'll see how we approach that to make sure everybody knows that we are still open and available. And then this one's really obvious, and we all know this, but it's, it's more important now so than maybe in the past. And that is communicating with the clients every chance you get. People are feeling isolated. People don't know what the next steps are. Some people have thrown their hands up. They're just confused by what's going on. It's extremely important. Many of you are extremely important cogs within your local communities. And as you're those important community leaders, it's important they hear from you and understand that, as Steve mentioned earlier, you're there and you're available for them to help them get their tax returns, get their economic impact payments, any other information related to that that you are able to provide. We do want to talk a little bit about the COVID-19 and tax preparation aspect of things. So at this point, Steve, I'm going to turn this over to you and let you discuss a little bit about how we approach this. Excellent, John. Thank you so much and excellent points made so far. Let's continue with the, the understanding that we are open for business. It doesn't mean that social distancing isn't important. It very much is and it is for you and your clients. And in fact, it oftentimes leaves a subliminal message. If you've done the things that you need to do, you're telling your clients you care. So some things to remember when it comes to social distancing, First of all, avoid face-to-face -face client meetings whenever possible. So you'll want to begin by looking at things like securing drop-off boxes in your lobby or waiting area, as well as utilizing web meeting tools if, if necessary or if possible, and to maximize remote tools such as remote signature capture and tax pass. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those in just a moment, but they're exciting tools that you can use that get, allow your, your clients to send you information without ever having to be face-to-face. However, just kind of finishing up on the avoid the face-to-face -face piece, that doesn't mean if there is a chance that you have to be with somebody, one of the things you want to do is make sure that those precautions that you're taking, you know what, tell that particular individual that, again, you care. So should you need to meet clients face-to-face, -face, please make sure you remember the following. You want to limit the number of people in your lobby. And if you make that known, you're telling people, guess what, I not only care for my own well-being, but I care for yours as well. 
remove every other chair to increase the space, and of course, avoid shaking hands, wear gloves, wear face covering, and sanitize and wash the hands often. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed in my local community is that I'm more apt to give my business to a restaurant that might have to go things or I'm, I'm picking up things when they have done these types of things. You know, that when they have sanitized pens where you're going to sign for your, for your food or whatever it might be, have that in mind. What's the reaction that people are going to have? And if the reaction that your customers are going to have, your clients are going to have is, is that, hey, you know what? They've thought about these things. That is a very powerful subliminal message that you care. You care for them short term. You care for their health and well-being as well. So social distancing is important, but just have a strategy with regard to it. Next up, really important, is do everything you can to go mobile. You know, one of the things that John has said before is you want to replace the words like close. Well, guess what? Being available doesn't mean that you have to necessarily be face-to-face. You want to do things like utilize mobile apps from your tax software provider. And again, this this particular uh, presentation that we're making, we're, we're doing so for anybody that wants to join us. If you are a CrossLink subscriber, which we're hoping you are, but even if you're not, our our particular um, mobile app is, is the Tax Pass mobile app, and you'll want to utilize that. It's a very powerful tool. It allows you to pass information to and from your clients and be able to do so and still stay stay safe because you're remote. Okay, so customers can send you their tax information and attach supporting documents and images as well. On top of that, important all relevant information into the client, client tax return. So when you get the information from your customers, they'll even begin to autofill the return. So it's not only a powerful tool, it's a very efficient tool as well. And so that efficiency helps your business, but it also helps your clients when they know that they send information and immediately you don't have to ask for it again. Okay. On top of that, if needed, give the option for the kiosk mode. And kiosk mode simply means that, you know what, if you happen to be open for business, that they can go ahead and enter the information, and then it will begin to uh, pre-fill the return, So should you happen to be in your office. So, again, one of the things we're pointing to is, is that you want to stay open for business, but that staying open for business might be something in which they can send the information mobily to you, and then you can do the tax return from that way as well. Uh, whether you actually are in the office or you're doing it this way, either way, you are staying open for business during this most critical time for your customers. Okay. Next up, when it comes to going mobile, the other thing to remember that's very important is the ability to capture people's signatures without them having to be in your office. So what is what are we talking about? Well, literally through our software and some of our integrations that are out there, you can capture a client's signatures remotely by way of text or email. On top of that, you're going to be able to, perfect for customers when they can't get to your office, which we just talked about, we would prefer that they're not, even though that they, you know that you're open for business. And then workers, uh, it works also for the EROs, paper pairs, and customers alike. So everyone can be utilizing this tool. And what's really interesting about this is that if you have not used these tools before, the information, you first of all, you're welcome to contact us. You can call our technical support department, and we'll walk you through those types of things. Or on top of that, you can go to our website. I think this is the most appropriate time. If you can pop onto our website just for a moment, John, if we could switch over there. There you go. If you look down at the bottom, keeping your tax business running during this COVID um, outbreak, one of the things that you'll see right there is all the information that's available to you. So we get very excited about this type of stuff. But the reason we're excited about it is, is that it's available for you, even videos on how to access things like non-returning client lists, as well as how it is that you'll set up your, your mobile apps, okay? So all of that information is available literally through our site as well. Take a look at the videos, especially if you have not used our mobile apps before or remote uh, signature capture, okay? So that, popping back to what we were talking about, go ahead and finish this one up. And moving forward, business continuity plan. One of the things that's very interesting is just in case, always, always make sure that you have a plan. And what do we what we talk about? Guess what? There are different ways that you can actually access the CrossLink software. And you want to check it if you're not a CrossLink subscriber with whatever company you're using for these same types of things. If needed, know the options for individuals to work remotely because that's what that's oftentimes going to happen. So our desktop users can unplug their computer and take it to a remote location. On top of that, you can utilize a third-party remote desktop protocol. That's something that's very, very um, integrated or has the ability for integration with our particular software solutions. Additionally, 
You can move your Crosslink 1040 license to home PC by way of serial reset. And finally, you can discuss with your dedicated Crosslink team member. We are open. We are available to help you through this as well. So if you have any kinds of questions, feel free to contact your sales rep, your your uh, your uh, representative will be more than happy to tell you what options might be available to make sure that you're, you are open for business during this very, very unique time. Okay, Going through the additional resources that might be available for you, I'm going to go ahead and pass it back over to John. John, you can take us through what resources people might want to consider as they're staying open for business. Okay, thank you. Yes, and mm -hmm. Steve, as Steve has, has highlighted several times throughout this, I highlighted as well, is we are open. We are available and we mean that for you to communicate that to your community to your tax paying clients but we also mean that for you whether you're a crosslink customer or you're just somebody in the tax industry and you need information we are open and we are available for you we also assume that your current tax software provider is open and available to you but no if needed you are more than welcome to contact us one of the things i'm going to suggest to you is on the lower right hand side of the screen, the dialog box you have for this go-to webinar, there's a questions box. At the end of the call, I'm going to leave that open and you can, uh, for a few minutes, and you could go ahead and type your questions into us. We're not going to answer them live because we have so many people dialed in on this call. We have a large attendance today, but go ahead and type your questions in there, and we'll make sure that we respond to you with the answers to the questions you have as it pertains to this topic. So that's a resource available for you, which is us. And we know that you make yourselves available to your community. So with that, everybody should be familiar with some of the government resources available at this point, including the ability to check the status of economic impact payments and whatnot. But if you're not, the place probably for everyone to start is at irs.gov slash coronavirus. And from there, you can link to just about everything the IRS has available. So if you're not already uh, familiar with that, we wanted to make sure you were. And then number two, we do want to talk about some of the Crosslink resources. And this is not, for, if you're not a Crosslink customer, this is not a Crosslink pitch. Rather, it just happens that it resides on the Crosslink website. Uh, that said, is we have our Tax Resource Center. Our Tax Resource Center is updated with regular information regarding tax updates that are important to you and your business as you go through the tax season. And many of you probably receive those tax updates today via email, but there are additional tax resources available on that website that we encourage every professional tax preparer to take a look at. In addition, as Steve highlighted earlier, there's a lot of information currently available from the Crosslink homepage to resources available to you at this time. And one of those, is the federal and state extensions. Again, this is not Crosslink specific. Anybody can access this information. And what we've done is on any given state, you have an update along with any associated notes for that state on what the new deadlines might be or any contingencies associated with that deadline. We have also done that for business returns. So that information is readily available to you today. All right, so we want to make sure you're aware of that information out there. We're going to go through this really quick. And then we have already shown you keeping your tax business up and running. Steve highlighted a couple of the videos that are already on there. So please take a look at those uh, so that you can proceed. And here's a sample of each of those. In addition to that, we do want to make you aware that there's a lot of how-to videos that exist on the Crosslink YouTube page. So if you're not already familiar with it, I would recommend any tax preparer, go ahead and go to our YouTube page, subscribe, and then anytime we post a new video, you will receive an update. And included in that are dozens, dozens, if, if not a hundred or more videos at this point. But there are also these two that cover things we talked about, about utilizing mobile apps, remote signature capabilities, how to export a non-returning client list so you can reach out to your customers. Additionally, we don't, anybody who follows us on our social media knows that we don't particularly use it to market to you. So you're not going to go to this website to be marketing, but we are going to utilize our uh, our social media channels to communicate with you on a regular basis. 
And for example, on our YouTube page, which we encourage you to follow, we have recently posted a video on marketing to your, uh, your tax business in the era of social distancing. Some of the same things we talked about today, but in a slightly different format. That's available on our Facebook page or on our Twitter site. For example, we showed you, we wanted to extend our thank you to you. We've done that on that Twitter site as well. So again, to show you that we're not out there to, to market heavily to you, rather we're out there to provide you the information that's pertinent and relevant to you and your business in this current era. So as we near a close, I would like to remind everyone, if you have any questions or you feel there wasn't something covered that you were hoping to get information on, go ahead and type it in the questions dialog box on the lower right hand side of your screen and we will make sure to have somebody reach out to you with the answers you're looking for. If we don't have the answers, at a minimum, we'll point you in the right direction for those answers. So in closing, I would like to remind everybody that social distancing is here. It has absolutely ha changed how we market to our taxpayers, but we also need to recognize it's not always gonna be like this. We all will be together soon, but until then, there's a few things you need to do. Number one, remind your clients you are open and available. You also need to remind your clients that you can complete their tax returns with little to no in-person contact. And most importantly, as we move through this, you need to communicate with your customers. And along those lines, one of the things we had communicated to you is that we're gonna to keep today's presentation to 30 minutes. I believe we are right at the half hour mark at this point. We wanna be respectful of your time. I will leave the dialogue box open for a while if you wanna go ahead and enter your questions. Otherwise, very much, we recognize that it's a unique time for tax preparers, but we also recognize the value you provide to your community. And we wanna thank you, not just for joining us, but being open and available for your community. Steve, would you like to add anything to that? No, I just wanna echo what you're saying and stay safe, everyone. Please, your community is counting on you as an essential service. Thank you, everyone.